Hi, I'm Re, Mummy of Four. Thank you for joining me on Facebook Live today. And today we are talking all about um, things that I wish I had known um, about having a baby, and more specifically about physically giving birth to a baby. Um, obviously, I've done it four times. It's not the most fun thing I've ever done, um, but I think there's a lot that I wish I'd known, and I think I, that this is very common from speaking to loads and loads and loads of mums. Yes, you must drink, drink, yes, drink. I've got Zara here with me. Um, yeah, so there's lots that, um, from speaking to lots of mums, uh, morning Lauren, thank you for joining, um, speaking to lots and lots of mums, there are so many things that you, know, you can read the books, you can think you're really, really prepared, but there's stuff they just don't tell you. So I'm going to tell you that stuff right here today. Um, and if there's anything that you wish you'd known before having to go through the whole childbirth, whether that be, you know, having and puffing and pushing or having a cesarean, whatever it is, if there's anything that you wish you'd known about bringing a baby into the world, pop it in the comments and share it with the rest of the world because I'm telling you this stuff they just do not put in the books. So my first thing that I don't think I was prepared for before I had my first was how nuts everyone was going to drive me leading up to going into labour. It's this kind of, it's a really weird time where at any point during the day you could have the most boring mundane day in the world where it could be really, really normal or your whole life could change forever. So it could be, yeah, I'm still pregnant and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> or everything could change forever and that's huge. What a, what a massive difference that could be in a day. But the most annoying thing is people, very well-meaning people going, have you had the baby yet? They'll send you messages. Have you had the baby yet? It's like, no, I haven't had the king baby yet. I'm still pregnant. <laughs> it is really, really, it's intense. It's an emotional time. And um, as well-meaning as everyone is, it'll drive you absolutely nuts. So I don't think I was prepared for that. Next thing, the things that you worry about before you have your first baby just don't matter. When it comes down to it, and you're in the throes of it all, all the stuff that you worried about, about what you were going to maybe wear, or were you going to be embarrassed with people looking at your lady bits, you're not going to care, I'm telling you. I am telling you now, you won't care. So you'll worry about, you know, being examined, or have I got the right, you know, what am I going to wear, or have I shaved my legs, or... You're not going to care. Seriously, you, there will be not any time in your whole life where you care less about anything, about that stuff, than when you're in labour. So... If you, uh, if you understand what I mean, give me some likes in the comments. Just give me some hearts if you know what I'm talking about because you will not. <laughs> you really, really won't care. If anyone did care at that point, well done to you because I just didn't care. Oh, morning Marilyn, thank you for joining. Um, just talking about all the things that um, people don't tell you about when you're ha having your baby. Physically having your baby, giving birth to your baby. So, um, yeah. The next thing, labour will not necessarily start... No, that's true, Lauren. Lauren has just said you don't even care if you have a poop. It's true. You just don't care. You just don't care. At the time, now, the idea of doing that in front of someone, you'd probably be quite mortified, but at the time, you'd be like, do you know what? If you go cut my leg off to get this baby out, which one do you want? Take them both. Just get the baby out. Yeah, okay, so my next thing. Labour will not necessarily start in some kind of Hollywood level of drama. So it won't be like, <gasps> like in the films, <gasps> my water's gone, oh, I'm in so much pain, ah, oh, quick, the baby's coming. Now, I've only ever been induced, um, four times, but apparently being induced is actually sort of more abrupt than um, natural labour by all accounts. And if anyone who's ever had a baby without being induced um, can testify, if anyone can just pop in the comments and help me out here. But by all accounts, it's a bit more gradual. It's a gradual, natural builder. And yes, subsequent babies can be a lot faster, but it's not like, ooh, first twinge, ah, catch the baby. Um, subsequent babies can obviously get a bit quicker, but your first one, it's just not going to be that quick. It's not going to be that dramatic. Um, so yeah, by all means, if you get any twinges, listen to your body, get some help, whatever. But just don't yeah. think that it's going to be quite that dramatic. You want your drink? Drink. Cut, cut, cut. We started saying cut, cut, cut for drink. Yeah, mm. yeah. cut, cut, cut. Can everyone want to say hello? Quick hello to Zara before we carry on. Zara, say hello to everybody. Look, say hello. Say hello. Right, there we go. That's my youngest. All right, back now onto what we're talking about. Oh, yes, water breaking. Now, 
some people, this could, this, I think what I didn't quite anticipate is how different this could be. Um, water breaking could be just a little trickle, like, you know, a bit of a trickle and it just kind of leaks out of you for ages and ages. That's gross. Or, yeah, it could be a bit of a flood. <laughs> now, obviously, as I've only ever been accused, mine have only ever gone in the hospital. Um, but each time for me, well, three times, or at least, I hate to say it was a bit of a flood. It was a bit like a everywhere. And it's smelly and gross, you know. But hey-ho. Um, and Marilyn says, one thing I didn't know the first time around that every labour mother goes through the phase and their birthing process they feel like they can't go. Yes. That isn't my stuff to say. That definitely, Marilyn. And that is one of, one of the things I'm actually really keen to talk about today because it wasn't until baby number four that that stuff hit my head. Um, so we are getting to that. There's some really good stuff coming up. Oh, Dara's telling me she wants a banana. Do you want a banana? Banana? Say banana? Yeah? Dara wants a banana. There we go. Right. The next thing, which is actually really well to what Marilyn was saying. Um, I didn't discover till uh, I had baby number four, hypnobirthing. And if I'm honest, I didn't have time to read the whole book. I've actually written a post, which I'll link below, on hypnobirthing when you don't have time to read the whole book. I just actually talked to a whole load of friends about it. I read a um, read of stuff online. Um, the gist of it, the very, very bare bones basic is, your natural reaction to pain is this. But what you want your body to do is this. Ah, let the baby out. So hypnobirthing, and I can um, I can talk about it all day really, but um, the basis of it is rather than doing this when you're in pain, because with my first two I was like crawling up the bed and trying to get out of my own body, but what you need to be able to do is this, and just relax and let everything go, which sounds like easier said than done. Um, so a, friend, a really good friend of mine um, introduced me to something called rainbow breathing, which is amazing. So basically all you do is it's, it's a relaxation technique, but it's also a contraction countdown. So it's like, if I can get, by the time I get to the end of this rainbow, the contraction will be gone, the pain will be gone. So all you do is you breathe in, you go, and you think of red things, and you exhale for as long as you can. And you go, for like 30 seconds or whatever it might be. And you think of red things, like roses, hearts, you know, just all the different red things. And the next time you inhale, oh, hi, Renee, thanks for joining. Um, the next time you inhale orange, so you go, and you think, God, oranges, I didn't think of many oranges, but I'm like, oranges, big trays of oranges, lots of round oranges, I don't know, what are our little orange things? Anyway, so they, <laughs> but this is what your brain's doing, so you're thinking about all this stuff instead of the pain, and then you're like, yellow, so you're like, okay, sunflowers, daffodils, whatever it might be. I guarantee you, by the time, as long as you're taking nice, deep, long breaths, by the time you get to the end of that rainbow, the contraction will be gone. And I found that a really, really helpful tool. And I wish someone had told me about that before I had my first baby, because by the time I had my fourth baby, my husband couldn't even tell when I was having a contraction or not. Um, I had to literally whack him in the leg and tell him to shut up because I was doing that. Because I went from absolutely climbing the walls through contractions to just being able to cope, really. Um, and then we had to have a little signal where I'd like tap him in the leg and he'd have to tell all the doctors and nurses to shut up and stop talking to me because I wasn't there. And then he'd be like, and I could tap him again and say I was back in the room and I'd gone through my rainbow. So rainbow breathing. Again, I've written a whole post about that. So if you do have a baby, check that out. I will link that below after the live. Um, right, this is going back to Marilyn's point and this is so, so important. Marilyn's mentioned this in the comments and I want you to, if you're gonna have a baby, to implant this in your head because it is probably the most important bit. Every single woman, if you're going through labor, will get to that point where you go, I cannot do this anymore. I can't do it, I've had enough, I give up, I'm not doing it anymore. And when you get to that point, it means you're nearly there. So you need to say to yourself, well, I can't do it anymore, I'm nearly there. Well, I can't do it anymore, I'm nearly there. Um, I reach that point with every one of mine. And for the first three, I just I can't do this anymore, I can't, you know, as you do. With baby number four, I was actually having a chat with the consultant at the time. He was telling me a very sulky spoken voice that the baby was going to be a very long time, the induction wasn't working, and, um, and I was just silently sort of doing my rainbow breathing and glaring at her, and sitting there thinking, I can't do this anymore. 
so therefore I know you are wrong. I know you are wrong, I know this baby is coming soon because I cannot keep this up for as long as you're telling me it's gonna be. And because I know I cannot keep this up, I know this baby is coming. Um, and that's baby number four, that's Sarah over here, who I was holding, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes later. Um, she was born on the ward, right where we were, because there wasn't any time, because it came, you know, from there, I knew I couldn't go much longer. I think they, the doctor disappeared out of the room. And then five minutes later, I said to my husband, water's about to go, need to push, and they barely got my trousers off. So yeah, it was that, you know, that quick from cannot do this anymore to holding baby, not that long, you know? It's called, I think it's called the transition, Tell me if you know if midwife types can uh, give me the technical term, but um, it was just you know I couldn't cope, couldn't cope. It means you need that. So important to remember because if you know that in your head, or just get your birth partner to tell you, you because you will say to them, I can't do this anymore, and they can say, Ha! Remember we discussed this. That means you need to there. Transition. Yes, there we go. Thank you, Marilyn. Just confirm that for me. Right, another one. Um, when I was in labour, pushing my first out, one of the midwives said something to me, she said, it's going to feel like he's coming out of your bum, and it did, it kind of did, it's um, obviously a hole that's not as big as a baby's head, and it expands to just take over the whole area, so yeah, it's going to feel like they're coming out of your bum, you have to push down in your bum, and I don't know, I just don't think before I had my first baby, I thought it had anything to do with my bum, but yeah, Feels like you're pushing the baby out your bum. What can I say? That's what it feels like. Um, oh, which brings me to the next point. It's gonna take feel like someone's taking a blowtorch to you who are, I'm afraid. Uh, ring of fire, anybody? If anyone has experienced that, just give me some hearts there. Anyone's had a baby? Um, knows what I'm talking about. Basically, as you're pushing out, it just feels like you're on fire down below. What can I say? That's what it's gonna feel like. Yeah, you did that to me. Yes, and she's grinning at me. She thinks it's hysterical. Um, uh, next point. I think this is how anyone ever manages to have sex ever again after having a baby. It's because I suppose evolution gives us this thing where most of the stuff we will forget. So unless we write it down, or film it maybe, who does that? Maybe some people do. Um, you're not really going to remember it. So even as I'm telling you this stuff now, it's not like proper memories. It's more like a story I'm telling you about a film I saw or um, a drunk memory. It's like telling a story of a drunk night out where you've got most of the details, but it's a bit hazy. Because I think if you remember, remember it like properly, properly, well, you wouldn't take the risk again, would you? Let's face it. But, um, but there we go. So yeah, I think that... It all comes, but do you know when you will remember it all? When you have another baby. When you go back into that environment again, you're like, oh, I remember this. <coughs> ah, ah, yeah, ah. She says, she says ah, when she's not supposed to do something. Oh, thank you. Thank you, that's very kind. It's all back up. Nice, thank you. Um, so yeah, you will remember it again. When you are next in labor, you'd be like, Oh, this feels familiar. Oh, what was I thinking? Whoops. Um, I did have a slight glimpse of it. A very good friend of mine was in labour and I went to visit her in the hospital where I had my babies. And I was about three, four months pregnant. And um, and she looked like the most glamorous person in the whole world while she was in labour, which she, looked, she didn't look like she was in labour. Hence why they, people didn't actually believe she was in labour. And bless her, she always have baby in the lift, but you know, another story. But anyway, I went to visit this friend, um, and I thought, I was looking around, I was like, ah, uh oh, I can see what you're going through, and it was all creeping in back to me, and it's like, I wasn't quite at the stage where I was super fed up of being, you know, I hadn't been through nine months of pregnancy yet, and, but it was all coming back of, oh, yikes, I've got to do this, and the sight and the smells of being in the hospital again, it just all came back to me and it was a bit much. But um, there we go. Marilyn's commenting. She's saying, honestly, the birthing process for me is when I generally be able to embrace the second time around, know my body and had done it before. It made a huge difference. I was willing to lean into it and just let my body take over. Yeah, well, it does. It makes such a big difference when you know what to expect. So, and it does, it does come more naturally to you. And as I say, even if you forget a lot of it, as you get, your body just, it's like, I don't know, it's like, 
driving a car is that you don't really think about it for the the tiny little bits. Oh, there you go. Lynn saying hi, Zara. She's saying hi to you. She's eating, so she's yeah. behaving. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Drink. And she's got a drink. Good. Yeah, so what was I saying? <laughs> I digress. This is the beauty of Facebook Live. Um, basically, you don't... Zara wants to talk to it. Right, so do you want to say a quick hello to everybody? Say hello. Say hello. Hello, good girl waving. You're clever girl, very clever. Right, anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, Yeah. It, it is just, it's a natural thing, but you will forget about... Forget about the minute details of it until you're next to neighbour, but then it does all come flooding back to it. It's clever, really, because it protects us from real memories, but then it pulls them back out when we need them. So, um, yeah, so that's basically, they were my things that I wish I had known. Um, and bits like my teeth, oh, that was the other thing. I wasn't until I was in labour again, and I said to my husband, hang on, my teeth are jammed. They do this when I'm in labour, and I only forgot. And I only remember that I even said that to him and he told me afterwards. So basically, yeah, it's bits like that that you forget and they all come back when it happens again. But one thing I will say is, as much as I may have frightened you a lot now, that wasn't my intention. I was just trying to be honest. Because let's face it, we've got us girls to be honest with each other. But it can't be that bad. And they're totally worth it, aren't they? Zaza, are you worth it? Zaza? Are you worth it? Mm. She's totally worth it. She's totally worth it. And all of my four are totally worth it. And it can't have been that bad or I really wouldn't have done anything. So, so yeah, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, I'm, the intention is, other than probably uh, over these to hold those, we'll be here every Wednesday at 10 doing our chit chat about parenting stuff. If there's anything in particular you would like to talk about, any parenting things that... Um, you need help with then you can head over to the parenting Facebook group which is parenting made easier um, which you can find linked over on the Facebook page and if you've got any issues at all they are a really amazingly supportive group of mums who just help each other out so it's just like it's the middle of the night and this has happened my baby won't sleep or I need advice how's best to handle this this has happened to my child in school whatever it is if you've got a problem post it in there they are such an amazingly supportive group of mums and even if you just need to rant we all need to do that sometimes. Hell, I need to do that all the time. But yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, make sure to keep giving me all the, the hearts and the, the thumbs up on every time you watch these Facebook Lives because it's the only way Facebook shows them to other people. If you don't, um, if you don't actually to give the, it's the, giving the hearts just means Facebook says, hey, this is good content, let's show it to more people. So I'm always grateful and send loads of virtual hugs every time you send me loads of hearts. So thank you very much. Um, I tell you what we are. Oh yeah, Marilyn's actually saying the worst things the first people yeah. to give birth. Do you know what? We're going to talk about that next week because having spoken to a whole load of mums, um, which you can see if you read my, my Facebook post, uh, my Facebook post, yeah. my blog post, or which I'll link below, um, all about this. I said, ladies, tell me, you know, what you wish you'd known about giving birth, and so many of them came back with all the stuff they wish they'd known about recovering from birth. But I've actually split that into a whole separate topic. So there is so, so much about, I wish, because I really don't think there's enough information about recovering from birth. Um, we've got a whole, I think it's next Friday, a whole separate Facebook. Facebook keeps saying Facebook. That's the beauty of life. A whole separate blog post all about recovering from childbirth and the stuff that they just don't tell you. So thanks very much. See you all soon. Bye.